All right, for those of you that are just arriving, just make sure that you have um, an iPad or you have access to iPads in your classroom for this session. Um, if you have one to be able to work along, that's great. If not, just know that this training does deal with iPads. So if you are a Chromebook only campus, but have access to iPads, you can use this, but I just wanted to make sure I made that clear. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, first things first, a little bit about our department. We are San Antonio Independent School District's Ed Tech and Design team. Our vision um, really to make sure our students are engaged in their local and global communities, uh, making sure they're creators, citizens, emotionally intelligent citizens, critical thinkers and collaborators. Um, and for our mission statement for our department, we really wanna empower all students and teachers with quality learning experiences and seamless access to digital and physical resources, fostering student-driven real-world learning. Um, so I know that if you're not from SAISD, that is a similar mission, statements to, mission statement for a lot of um, campuses, especially now after the pandemic, and we've kind of been thrust into this um, uh, kind of digital world. So I wanted to be able to share a little bit about that. Um, and then the connection to us in our practice, um, this directly aligns with T-Test Dimension 1.1, where the teacher designs clear, well-organized sequential lessons that reflect best practice, align with the standards, and are appropriate for diverse learners. Um, so I absolutely love how easy Pages has made it to be able to create your own books. And I think this is something that can be used across content areas. Um, and I'm just super excited to be able to share it with you because I think it's something that I didn't realize that Pages was even capable of doing this until this year. So I wanted to create this session to be able to share my excitement with y'all. Um, if you have any questions, just know that I have Jamie in here. Jamie is also from the department. He has the same background as I do. Um, and he will be answering any questions that you may have in the chat, just so that you are able to get that handled right away. Um, a little bit about myself. My name is Celeste Cavena. I've worked in education for 16 years. I've had the pleasure of teaching every grade level in my certification, and I actually did that consecutively. So I was able to see the vertical alignment of the standards. I have taught every subject in my certification as well. So um, I find that I'm able to help y'all if you have any of those questions about how it can work in your classroom at your grade level. Um, don't be afraid to ask that because I've been there. Um, currently, I'm an ed tech instructional specialist in San Antonio Independent School District. I'm also a product of San Antonio Independent School District, so I'm very proud to be here um, and I'm excited to share today's training with you. So just an agenda of what we're going to do today. Um, first, I'm going to go over what Pages is because I know a lot of people um, may have heard of it, but they're like, nah, well, you know, I can just do that in Google or I can do that in Microsoft Word. So what sets pages apart? Um, I'm gonna show you how to modify the templates and pages, namely the ones that relate to book creation because this training, I do want to really focus on that aspect, turning pages into books. Um, we're gonna talk about some of the accessibility support that pages does put in for your students that may need some of the extra support. Um, we're gonna go over some instructional uses and this is when I would love to hear what your thoughts are as well, because I think we can all learn from each other. We all have a wealth of knowledge um, coming into this training. So being able to brainstorm some instructional uses in addition to me sharing some that I've found as well. Um, then I'll show you how to publish and share books. So there are a couple of different ways to be able to do that. Um, and I wanna be able to share the, the why behind the different ways and so that you can see how you can apply this into your classroom. So. The other thing I wanna make sure that you understand is that this is being recorded. So you can always rewatch this session later. Um, the other thing, this will be, the entire presentation will be shared at the very end. So if you ever wanted to go back and take a look at the other slides um, or rewatch or click on a link, um, that will be available for you at the very end of our training. So let's go ahead and get started. What is Pages? First of all, the app for Pages looks like this. So if you're just coming in and you have an iPad around, just make sure that you have this Pages app. It is a free app that's, that Apple 
provide. So this is not something you're gonna have to pay to download. Um, if you're in the district, it should be in your app store if it's a teacher iPad. If not, it's already loaded on. Um, but it is amazing and it is found on iPads, Apple products. So just know that if you have a MacBook at home and you've never explored pages, check it out, especially after this training. Um, so what's to like about it? Well, first of all, it has amazing pre-made templates for all sorts of documents, books. Now I'm going to focus on the books part, um, but if you love how visually pleasing the books are, just know that Apple also has some templates for documents as well um, for you to be able to create even flyers. Um, I've created flyers on pages as well. Super easy to do. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I like it is the ease of use, um, how easy it is to modify, not for not just for adults, but for students as well. And so using this as a tool that students can create with is really helpful. Um, when students learn these, the how behind using pages, they can apply it to other um, programs as well, because Apple programs have a lot of the similar um, icons to be able to create with. So using templates for books. So before we get into our iPads, I just want to share what I'm going to point out. First of all, I'm going to show you all of the different options that you have with templates for books. Um, the ones that I've noticed, you can do fiction, you can do nonfiction, you can do portrait, you can do landscape. Um, now for the portrait books, those I, I'm thinking are more for the upper grades. I'm not saying that your lower grade students can't use them, but just the landscape ones are super beautiful, um, easy to use, especially for those lower grade students. Um, I'm going to show you how to edit the templates, um, some of the cool features that you can add when you um, want to enhance some of those templates. So just know we're going to go over those, those three main things right now. So if you can go ahead and grab your iPad, I'm gonna stop screen sharing this screen for a moment and I'm gonna share my iPad screen with you. So this is what the icon looks like, um, just in case you are not familiar with it. Um, and then please try to follow along with me. You may see some templates and get distracted with that. So that's okay, because again, you can rewatch this or you can grab that presentation at the end um, to help you go back. So here we go. I'm going to stop my sharing and I am going to share my iPad screen. All right, so here's my iPad screen. If you notice at the very bottom, I do have the the icon because I do often open it. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it. Um, if this is your first time ever using pages, um, your screen may look a little bit different, but this is what it looks like after you've created some things. And as you can see, one template shows up a lot because I like to use this template with the lower grade students. Um, but when it comes down to you, your very first time, um, go ahead and come up to the top right hand corner and click the plus sign. And when you do that, you're going to have all sorts of templates. I love that Apple creates this recents part because again, I love this storybook template and I use it often so it shows up right away. Um, remember when I told you they had a lot of really awesome templates, you can kind of go through and see what these look like. Um, but I mean, lots of really helpful ways, lots of cool stuff here. And again, our focus is going to be on books, but I just wanted to kind of show you because I think sometimes we don't realize what is available or what has been updated until we go into create. Um, so top of the screen, you can see that you can even filter just by books. So I'm going to filter just the different books. Um, and so with this part, you can see the mixture of fiction. You can see the mixture of nonfiction just here with a portrait. And then if you scroll down, here you have your landscape option. So just looking at these templates, you can see that there are lots of ways to integrate this into the classroom. Um, this story option, obviously that's gonna be fiction, but just thinking about bringing um, those student reports, taking them up to another level, you can do something like creating a book, a nonfiction book on something like that. 
You can even attach it to maps. So it's just really cool the different things that you can use um, these templates with. Um, but again, I want to be able to show you just how easy it is to be able to edit. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pick my go to my favorite one, which is Kitty's morning walk. <laughs> what it says here, but it's really story. So if you want to try that one with me, try it. If not, try one of the other ones that you're interested in because the ability to change and edit the template is something that you can do with all of the different versions, okay? So first of all, let's take a look at what this little plus sign right here on the image is. So if you notice, Apple has created several different pages, which even has different layouts. So you can see like different layouts for your students, maybe just a picture here, a little bit of text. Um, you can always add multiple pages. If you come over here at the bottom where the plus sign is, we click that, it gives you even more awesome options to be able to include in your book. Um, you tap it and it adds it based on where you are in your story. And you can just take it and move it around if you wanna put it somewhere differently. Um, so I like this page because it really shows you all of these opportunities to add and modify these templates. So say my student was creating a storybook um, and they wanted to include a picture here. When they click on it, it's just as easy as clicking on the plus sign. They can choose a photo or video from their, their iPad already. They can take a photo or a video. And I love that video part because you may think pages, you think word processing, Maybe you don't wanna include that, but really we know that our students are a little bit more tech savvy. Um, they may wanna include a video um, into their book. And based on the different share options we have, um, if they're sharing to Apple Books, for example, they'll be able to include that video and be able to just make their book even more lively. So just know video is an option for students to create in their digital books. Um, you can also insert from different places. Um, so for example, if I click on insert from, if you had something in your files, you could pick from your files. So I just wanted to show most students will not go there. They'll stick with the top two um, when it comes to adding something. So I'm just gonna show, I'm just gonna take one of the pictures I have on my device and I'm gonna place it right here just to show you how easy it is. So I'm clicking the top one, choose photo or video. I am going to put, let's see, I'll put a picture of my chihuahua here. Oh, it's because right now it's not downloaded on my iPad. It's in the cloud right now. So let's do a different one. We'll do one, this one right here. Okay, well, this is technical difficulties. Usually it slides right in. I'm not sure if it's because I'm sharing my screen right now. Um, but with your students, when you just click that and you can add, um, add to it. The other thing I wanted to share with you is just because the text is this font, you can still modify that just as if it was a word processor, um, highlighting the text right here. When you click over on the little A, you can change the different um, font size here. Um, when you come over to this plus sign over here, you actually have a lot more features to be able to pick from. So you can choose to add a photo, camera, record audio. Um, this is really cool because we think about audio books for students. If we wanted our students instead of doing like a slides presentation or a keynote presentation, um, we wanted them to be able to share their group work together. They can even add audio to that, which I think is really cool. Um, but just looking at the top, so just to share with you a little bit about what this top part is, this obviously is dealing with images. It has the um, images icon. So looking at all of the different options for that, including drawing, which is something really cool to be able to add. If I click on drawing right here, um, just because I love when books, you can take a book and kind of make it even like jump off of the page. So I'm gonna pretend like this was my book and I'm just adding a little bit here just to kind of, of course, I am not an artiste, but just wanted to show you how easy it was to be able to take one of these templates and kind of make it pop out. And I think 
having these conversations with students is really cool. Um, what can we do to make this more exciting? Or what books do you like um, that you would like to see um, on your, your own iPad to be able to create a book that students are using based on books that they like so that they can pull some of those design elements. Um, but again, really cool ways to be able to modify. I'm clicking again at that plus sign up here at the top to get back to the screen um, because it has other cool stuff. When you click on this shapes tool, it doesn't just have icons. It has, of course, the basic shapes. And with these basic shapes, you can include text in them. And this is really helpful if, say, you wanted to add a label. So I'm going to show you clicking this shape right here. And then I'm going to double click inside. And I'm adding lion. Just like that, I can. Now I have a label. So your students, even something very basic with just if they're not at that level yet to be able to write complete sentences. Maybe they can at least use labels and take pictures to create a wordless book. Um, or, I mean, not wordless book, but has labels instead of big amounts of text. So I just wanted to show you how easy that was to add um, something like that. And just notice the different icon shapes that you can use for that as well. Looking at geometry, so we talked about how you could use this not just for literacy, but for math as well. They could do a shape book, something like that. Lots of different objects, icons for students to be able to use to enhance their story. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly click through so you can see, um, because a lot of time I think we don't even realize some of these things are here unless we go through and look. So I just wanted to make sure that I shared that with you, that your students have access to all of this. Um, the other cool thing, thinking math relation um, for those upper grade students that may be doing, say, a math report, maybe they're doing a nonfiction book report on um, global warming and they wanted to share a little um, diagram to be able to make it even more amazing and really try to set that purpose for your students to start thinking, okay, what is the purpose of the book that I'm creating if it's to inform let me create some infographics to be able to enhance what I'm trying to say. Um, so super cool. You can even have really beautiful looking um, pie charts and graphs. And same with tables. It goes with you know just simple um, tables to add to more complex and students can just click on it and it gets added directly to their page. So taking a template that's already there but making it your own is really awesome. Um, showing students how they can just click here. They can add their own text. Um, I said I wanted to also talk a little bit about accessibility support. So I just want to kind of show a little bit about that. Um, your students can actually record what they're saying. Now there are a lot of um, downsides to that because sometimes the microphone might not pick up the words that they want to and if they're not fluent readers they may not catch that um, but again it's there for those students that may need it translate as well is there so you have some ability for your students to be able to see that um, to be able to help them while they're creating these books so you know your students you know their ability level um, maybe you only talk about the accessibility features with the students that actually need them instead of creating a handicap for some of your students that may not need it. Um, so does anybody have any questions right now about how to modify some of these templates? I don't see anyone in the chat, so I just wanted to, to give a little moment. All right, so because we don't have any more questions on this, I'm going to go ahead and stop my share with pages, um, but I wanted to um, know, I want you to know I will be back because I wanna be able to show you how to share a little bit later. So that's kind of the tricky thing with these trainings is being able to switch from iPad to my screen. So one moment as I get you back to my other presentation. All right, so I talked a little bit about the accessibility supports. Um, so we do have the text to speech. I showed you the translation. Um, the other things that it has that you know all basic word processors have. You have the spell check, the grammar check. Um, but really, I think the thing that makes 
pages so accessible is the click to change template, how easy it is to be able to click on it, um, change the stock photo with your own photo. Because iPads are mobile, you can really take it places, take pictures of things, include it into your story that your students are creating. Um, students can do research on their iPad and take images that they find and include it in their book. So it's just super cool that Apple provides these accessibility supports. And don't worry if this is a lot for you because I have provided some resources um, to help you do this in your classroom. So now talking about some of the instructional uses, I broke it up into two different categories, um, teacher uses and student uses, because um, as teachers, especially in the upper grades, sometimes we have a novel study that we want to do, and maybe we want to include those guiding questions, because again, this is tied to um, dimension 1.1, right? So you can actually create a template for your students to use using guiding questions for say a specific chapter that you're studying, students can add to that as well. It's super cool. Um, so that's a way that a teacher can use it. And I will show when I'm about to share um, later, I'll show you how you can save a template to be used by students. Because again, novel studies, super cool. You can make your own classroom books. I saw this used at one of my campuses that was an Amplify campus. And so Amplify campuses, um, have a lot of read alouds with not a lot of pictures, but this teacher wanted her students to have their own copy um, to be able to practice rereading. So creating that classroom book for the Amplify worked beautifully. But of course, classroom books about shapes, classroom books about, you know, there's so many different uses um, and this would be more teacher led. So you can create a about me book because a lot of times beginning of the year, I know we just wrapped up a year, but Thinking about the beginning of next year, um, having the, a, a book that describes who you are as a teacher so your students feel more comfortable like, oh, I know my teacher. I read this book about her favorite hobbies and it's also great for when Teacher Appreciation Week comes around and they're asking you, what's your favorite candy? What's your favorite color? So just know classroom books, super cool. Personalized workbooks and I, like I was mentioning before, personalized templates, really awesome way to be able to have your students just click plus to include information or I need to answer this question here. Um, for student uses and about me, so we talked about the about me as a teacher, you could do an about me as a student and that's a great way to kick off the year to get to know your students, show them this tool. Um, because for me, if I was thinking about starting next year and I knew how easy it was to create books and pages, I would use them all the time. So I'd wanna introduce my kids to it right away so they can see it as a tool that they can use as well. Um, being able to use it for creative writing. I think sometimes in the upper grades, when you're really get, trying to get your students to write, they're a little hesitant. They're um, afraid to, to share what they're saying. Maybe they wanna add include a picture, but they're having trouble with their um, figurative language. So giving them a book to be able to put down their ideas, but also enhance it with images. And then later going back and they can always edit their book and they can take that image. And now they can come up with some figurative language with coaching from their teacher or a peer um, to be able to include that. Autobiographies, I know that's kind of like an about me, but this is more for the upper grades. Um, you could also use it like a portfolio. So your students can submit pictures of things they've created and at the very end of the year that can be shared with a parent um, in a similar way that you can do with Seesaw, except unlike Seesaw, the parents will have this file. And if they have an iPhone or an iPad and you share it with them through Apple Books, they have this, this artifact from their child's year in school that shows all of the amazing work they did, includes videos, includes audio, and this is something the parent owns for the rest of the time that they have um, with their iPad, assuming they back it up and they don't lose it that way. Um, projects, super awesome way to be able to bring it in. Um, you saw the nonfiction versions of the book. So being able to give students that opportunity is super cool. Um, but I also wanted to share a little bit about the design elements. So with the design elements, we have, um, like font choice, the size, style of text, 
colors, alignment, but really the best way to do this is asking your students, what are your favorite books? Why do you like these books? Have them go through the books, find what they like about it. Um, I know for me, I love books that have pictures that hang off the page. I think it's really cool. I love when text is used in different ways and you can move that around. Students can add those drawings. They can add text. It doesn't have to just be typing. It can be writing with their finger or they're drawing with their Apple pencil. Um, so many cool things to do. And if you're like next level with pages, um, I'm gonna share a resource with you that will give you even more um, skills to be able to use pages with because you can use other apps on your iPad like sketches to be able to really do amazing artwork and then bring it in to your, um, into your, your um, book. So I have, yes, I think it would be a great, thing for IB schools because I think the student reflections would be great. Um, and this is something, it's a little bit more professional looking than say Flipgrid, love Flipgrid, but again, thinking about if, what is the purpose, what is the audience? Um, so this really ties back into literacy when our students are creating things, you know, what is the purpose? So students are now authors, so they are now understanding completely what author's purpose means. Um, but really cool way to include text that they really like. So as we're getting closer to the end of our training, I did want to share a little bit about publishing and sharing with your iPad and what the benefits of each of these would be. Um, so if you're just gonna share it, um, you can airdrop it to the teacher, you can share it in Google Drive, you can share it in iCloud. Now, if this is a district, iPad, they're not going to have the iCloud. Um, Google Drive is something that it really depends on your classroom. If this share is what you're wanting, AirDrop would be, again, my best favorite way to share stuff is with AirDrop. If you're going to export it, so say you want to be able to share it with someone outside of these, maybe, maybe your grandmother in uh, Minnesota wants to see what you've done. Um, you have a couple of options. You can export it with the PDF, Word, EPUB, which is something that they would use to publish books, um, RTF, or a Pages template. So Pages template would be, like, a, like I said, if you're a teacher, you want to create, say, a novel study, um, and you want it to follow a specific format, and you want to be able to use that, say you used it for Charlotte's Web, but you want to follow the same format for Percy Jackson, again, save the template so that you can use it again next time. Okay, I see Ms. Boone has just shared that AirDrop has been turned off. Um, that is a great question. So um, Jamie and I will reach out to our coordinators and see if we can fix that. I can see why, because if teachers are not very savvy with AirDrop, it can be, it can be a, a hot mess. So we'll reach out and find out a little bit more about that. Um, the next thing, um, that I wanted to be able to share is if you're going to print something, you actually want a paper copy and that happens, um, that is still an option. So don't think that if I'm showing you all of this stuff on pages, there are ways to get it printed, um, especially nowadays with wireless printing, you'll be able to do that. Another one is to publish to Apple Books. And this is my preferred way because you're able to keep all of those design elements that your students have created. So say they did record, um, they had a portfolio and at their very last page was a reflection on what, what they did and what they learned. Um, publishing to Apple Books would be a great way so that you make sure that the video remains there. Um, but I know that talking about something is different than actually showing. So I did want to switch my screen share so that I can show you how to be able to share from your documents. And I'm gonna start it just where we left off so y'all can see um, how to get there. And then we'll come back and we will have our attendance sign in. So let me go ahead and quickly show you how to get to that share because I know it may be a little bit trickier. All right, so we are here. If I was a teacher and I wanted to have my students um, 
uh, add a collaborator. I don't, I didn't, I forgot to mention that for y'all, um, but you can include that here. So if you had another, maybe the teacher wants to be added, you can add that right here. Um, the way I like to share, which I find is the easiest way to be able to share is I like to make sure that I have my, um, the correct book to share. As you can see, I have a lot of them. Um, I like to rename them. So I have all of my books together. You're gonna wanna select the story. And if you notice, select is up here. Because if you just tap it, it'll just open it. Then I'm gonna select the one that I wanna share. And then at the very bottom over here, you'll see share. And that's where you can see some of the different options that you have. If AirDrop isn't there, there's Google Drive there as well. Um, I see Ernest, who's one of our coordinators, says to share the EPUB to Google Drive. So you could click on that Google Drive right there. Um, Seesaw is there as well for those of you that are lower grade teachers. Um, but just know that, that that is how you can get to that share screen. Um, if you notice the export right here, Here's where you can pick the different format. So that EPUB, I'm gonna select that right there. And again, just make sure that you have a non-generic title. Make sure they have the author. Your students can get really creative with their book cover or just using an image. Um, but I love the way you do that, the way you're able to do this. And then clicking export here, it creates the file. Um, and then we would continue and here you have this, you can even, even save it to your files here. So just know if this is a lot there, you'll be able to rewatch this video again, or I will share some resources with the iPad. Um, so now that I showed you how to share that, I'm gonna come back over. All right, here we go. All right, so here are the resources that I wanted to share with you all. And I will put them in the chat as well, just so you have them. I just wanted to kind of share a little bit about what each of the resources are in case you would like to use them. Here's the sign-in sheet as well for attendance for this session. Um, but the pages user guide for the iPad is gonna be really helpful if this is your very, very first time using it. Um, the next link that I'm going to share is the official Apple support. So if you're having issues or you're not sure what did I do, I'm not, I can't find this, my photo isn't loading, um, they have amazing support here. Um, and then I found an introduction to creating a book in pages. So if you need, if I didn't do a good job doing it um, or you want better, just know that there are other options available. So I'm going to go ahead and drop these into the chat for you to be able to take a look at. So, and these are, will be the same and just know that I'm also gonna share the PDF of this presentation. So you will be able to click on each of these as well if that's an easier way um, for you to be able to get this. 